Hello Figments of My Imagination. Today I wanted to do something a little different, and that is I wanted to go over the recent leak for the Frexia set for Magic. So I actually have like a really big history with Magic. I've been playing it casually since 2004, about? 2002 maybe? Um, competitively really picked it up back in 2010. I made it to the Pro Tour in 2012, and that was basically the height of it. I stopped playing after that. I still like to look, I still like play the game casually every once in a while. And I always keep up with spoilers and things like that. I saw that there was a massive leak of spoilers. And I've always wanted to do one of these, like, evaluate the cards videos. So I figured, eh, screw it, why not? So I'm just going to do it live, no script, none of that shit. So let's see. First, we have one that was spoiled, well, Saturday. I think it's the same source. All right, let's see. Glyph of Sunslayer, First Strike, Death Touch, Black Green 1. Just comment damage to a player, choose one, draw a card and lose one life. Destroy target enchantment, remove up to three counters from target permanent. You can attack them and planeswalkers, which is pretty good, essentially using that. Enchantment removal, when it matters, it's going to matter. But it's just like one of those, it's just nice to have. First strike and death touch means it's going to win every combat. I'm not too familiar with standard as it stands right now, but in the past this would have been like an okay player. Like you'd, you'd play this, you'd play like a green-black rock deck or something. Like just mid-range good creatures. This would definitely make it. I mean, it, it kills everything, it draws you cards, perfect, perfect card for that kind of deck. So if there's a green-black deck, or if there's enough green-black cards to make a green-black deck happen, like a mid-rangey deck, or even maybe a control deck could use this. I, I doubt a control deck would use it, actually, but it's possible. Uh, good card, solid card, draws you cards. Creatures that draw you cards are pretty good. All right, now onto the main leaks. We'll start with this. One white... 1-1, one, one, Toxic 1. Toxic is just deals combat damage, so they also get a poison counter. Phyrexian White, tap, choose a color, another target creature you control against Toxic 1, and Hexproof from that color until end of turn. It can't be blocked by creatures of that color this turn. It's not really protection, but it's technically protection. That's, this, act, this seems insane. So it's essentially, not Mother of Runes, it's the new Mother of Runes, the Giver of Runes or whatever, the one that can't target itself. Like, your opponent has to kill it, they don't kill it, and then they can't kill anything else you have. That's really good. And then it itself can be a clock, because it has Toxic. Yeah, this, this seems like a great card. Any sort of white aggressive deck or white mid-range deck, this is amazing in it. This cycles back. I don't remember what they really called them, but I just called them the aggro lands. So that's nice, I guess. I don't know what the other lands in Standard are right now. I haven't kept up with rotation. Uh, Mirren's Safe House. As long as Mirren's Safe House on the battlefield has all activated abilities of all land cards and all graveyards. Oh, so it's like, there's that command a card, Manascape Reflector. So it doesn't come in tapped, so that's good. If you can give it haste, then you can kill them right away. Because there's the combo with um, yeah, Meta Vault and Griffin Cannon. Because Meta Vault makes it a Griffin. And then tap Griffin Cannon to untap it and give it plus one plus one. Gets infinite power, attack, kill them. Seems good. On its own, it's going to be a decent mana rock. If there's any cool lands in standard, maybe you can do something neat with it. But not coming in tapped, that's pretty big. Alright, Kaya the... Jeez, this is unreadable. Let me see. Okay, someone else read it for me. Good. Three white, white, black, black. Hexproof. Hexproof? A Planeswalker with Hexproof? Okay. Seems good. I mean, it's a 7-mana Planeswalker, so... Oh, okay, maybe everything moved. A 7-mana Planeswalker that has to be attacked to die is pretty good. Let's see. Plus 2 each point, loses 3, you gain 3. Okay. It's a f pretty fast clock. 0, draw 2 cards. Each opponent may scry 1. Wow, alright, so it's a controlled darling. Exile target creature or enchantment. If it wasn't an aura, create a token that's a copy of it, except it's a 1-1 one, one with flying. Okay, yeah, this is going to be like the equivalent of Karn back in the day. This is going to be, you want to get to 7 mana, you want to slam your Kaya, and you're going to win the game with it. Uh, very strong. Especially if you can somehow wipe the board before you play this, your, your opponent's not winning the game. They have to have their own Planeswalkers out, or maybe if there's a Destroy All Planeswalkers in Standard right now. I don't think there is. That seems obscenely good. Maybe I should be rating these. Yeah, I'm going to rate these out of, what, 10? That's a safe scale. I'm going to rate them as to how good I think they are in Standard, a format I don't know anything about anymore. This is like a 8. It's going to see a lot of play, I bet. Uh, 9. White weenies everywhere. Lands, they don't count. Like, 7. I don't know. This one, Mirren's Safe House. I'll give it a... Probably like a 5. I doubt there's enough lands to do anything broken with it. Probably just okay. Um, Kaya, I think this is a 10. Like, the card is... I, I don't see a world where it's not just obscenely broken. That's going to be the way you, you just build... You build Esper Control, you play this card, you win the game. So 10. Okay, maybe a 9, because, like, I don't know, what would 10s be? I'm just establishing the scale on the fly. Well, I rated this a 9, so I guess that's a 9. 10, 10 I would say, yeah, 10 is reserved for cards that are broken in everything. Like, any deck would just play the card, so this is, like, a 9. Okay, another unreadable card. Who spoiled these that they're all just, like, unreadable? Can you, can you get a better camera? 
one black green, not a cool can go on our Kaya duck, or not a Kaya duck, or Glissa duck. You may activate abilities of creature control those creatures at haste. Plus one, untap a creature, minus two, mill three, return a creature with mana value two or less from a graveyard to the battlefield. Okay, that seems strong, like, and it has three loyalties to start with. Three mana planeswalkers are always, like, obscenely broken if you can get value from them. And in any sort of, like, so this this further cements, if you want to build, like, a green black mid ranger aggro deck, as long as you have strong two drops, this card's going to be insane. And that deck's going to be pretty good. If you have two three drops, you have this and you have Glissa. So yeah, you play those and you're, you're just going to outvalue them, beat them up. That's that's fine. Alcator. Phyrexian Elephant Wizard. Okay. So there's a battlefield. Create a 3-3 three, three Golem. Okay, so it's the old Splicers. Being of your end step, three more artifacts into the battlefield. I control this turn. Create a 3-3 three, three Golem. Oh. Oh, yeah. I mean, I know cards are getting stronger, but Blade Splicer, each your art out. This is easily a nine. It's insanely strong, and I, f I feel like there's got to be some way to break it. I mean, if you could play it and play two artifacts in the same turn, you get another 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, that's that's going to be insanely broken. I can actually read this one. The beam of your upkeep, put an oil counter on this. Instant sorceries cost one less for each oil counter. Cost four has flash. Okay, that's like a three or something. There's probably going to be some stupid combo deck that plays it, but that's about it. All these are rares. That's pretty sweet. Mirax land sphere. Oh, new land type. Animal man of any color activate only if it enters the office turn. Okay, so the turn you play it, it's perfect color fixing. Three tap, create a one one with toxic one and can't block. Okay. So that's a strong card. I'm I'm gonna go out on a limb and call this a ten. I actually think every deck would want to play this. I Redux will play it because you'll want the one one late game. It doesn't hurt your mana that much. Because you could play it the turn you need the colored mana. I mean maybe you don't play four. You probably do, but maybe there's some sphere synergy. And hey, it makes this card a little better. Okay. What else we got? Oh, there you go, another sphere. Enter the battlefield two oils, tap add one, tap remove an oil, put an oil on target artifact creature control activate as a sorcery. Okay, so I haven't seen any oil cards yet, so I'm gonna put this at a five, because I think it's gonna be a role player in an oil type deck, but I just don't know what that looks like yet. Oh, battle cry's back, cool. Getting old vibes. The beginning of your combat on your turn, the next time target creature, do combat damage to one more players. This combat, prevent that damage. If damage prevented, create that many one one mites with toxic and can't block. That seems iffy. I think people are going to think this card's way better than it is. Preventing your damage to make tokens does not seem like a good a good strategy. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to call this like a three, and I think people are going to think it's really good, and it's it's not. There's no way that's what you want to do in an aggro deck. Yeah, and you have to target something, too. I mean, you could target like an opponent's creature if you wanted to not use it, but I, I don't know why you'd play this card. Okay, Monument to Perfection, two cost artifact, three, search your library for basic, sphere, or locus. Oh, so you can search up the... Okay. And Locust, so you can search up Cloudpost. They reprint a Cloudpost here, right? So that's pretty good. It's like an EDH card, really. I don't think, unless unless we have even better lands than this, if there's a Sphere or Locust that can destroy an artifact or enchantment. So you have, like, bullets to search up. I think it's just a casual card. So I'm going to call it a 4. Yeah. Solid 4. Oh, wait, it has a second effect. 2. I forgot to read. 3 mana becomes a 9-9. Nine, nine, loses all abilities. Gains indestructible and toxic. 9, okay. 9 more lands with different names. and all basic. Okay. Actually, this is a win condition, so it's a role player. I'm going to call it a 7, actually. This ability, I think, reevaluates that. So you can have a control deck where this is how you win the game. You have, like, one of the random lands. You get nine of them, you play this, you activate it, you kill them. Seems good. All right, Trample, Toxic 1, 4-4 four, four for 2 and a green. Deals combat damage to play, proliferate. Solid. Solid role player in an aggro deck. Three drops are, kind of, are normally a contested slot, though. I'll call it a 5. It's a role player if the deck exists. Encroaching Mycoseth. Three and a blue artifact, non land permanents you control are artifacts. Same is true for permanent spells you control and non land permanents you control. Okay, so it's Mike with Lattice for just you. I'm sure that's broken somehow. Probably just a casual card. I'll give it a four. Predictive Flame Stoker. Red. Whenever you cast a non creature spell, put an oil counter on this. Six and a red. Sack. Discard your hand, draw four cards. This ability costs one less for each one. Oh. Okay, it's a one, two. Okay, this is like a burn all star. It's probably strong. I don't know if it's strong enough for Modern Burn. It might be. Drawing four cards is very big. Then again, if you can cast... What, well, you need this to cost three mana? So you need to cast, like, four spells. If you can cast four spells in Burn, you've basically won. So maybe it's... Maybe sideboard for Modern Burn, but if there's a standard type Burn... Or what's that other format people play that's, like, between Modern and Standard? Is it Pioneer? Or Frontier? One of them. It's on, it's on Arena. And this is probably good enough for that. Like, you always want strong one-drops in Mono Red. I mean, 1-2 is kind of awkward. You'd prefer, obviously, the other way around in your aggro deck. But I think the drawing cards is going to be strong, so I will give it a 8. Man, this is only rated for standard. 7? Nah, 8. I'm sure this can see some strong play in the standard deck. You can even play it in a control deck, really. 
you board it in, and you just play it turn one, and you sit there killing all their creatures and stuff, and then eventually you cash it in for four cards. Seems okay. Black Sun's Twilight. Black X. Oh, the suns are coming back. I wonder if they shuffle in. Instant. Up to one target creature gets minus X, minus X. If X is five or greater, return a creature with mana cost X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Okay, that's strong. I like that. I'm going to give that a seven. A seven. It's a strong removal. Gives you value. It can give you a lot of value, obviously, and instant speed, which is great. Uh, like, your opponent plays a creature and passes, you kill their creature and get a creature back. Yeah, you're doing good. What did I say? A seven? I'm modifying it. Whatever I said, it's now a seven. All right, Malira, if you would get one or more poison counters, instead you get one poison counter and you can't get additional poison counters. Okay, so it's the anti-poison card. You always pick one of these and they're just not that good. Exile this, choose another target creature artifact. Let's put into a graveyard this turn, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. So it's Safi, but it exiles itself so you can't do combos with it. Okay, I mean it makes up for it by being a 3-3 three, three for 2, so conveniently 2 mana. So if that if that green-black deck is also white, you get to play this guy and your Glissa. You get to play Tyvar, so you just build a junk deck. Tyvar can bring her back. I mean, you can't... I mean, to get it, you exile her, so she can't bring her back after you use her ability, but you can just bring back a 3-3, three, three, and that's that's pretty strong. And the poison thing is just a side effect. So I don't know. Uh, rating for her... 6? 5. 5. If the deck exists, she's good. If it doesn't exist, she's meh. Grass Unstoppable Juggernaut, 8 mana. Legendary Juggernaut, hey, it's a little Juggernaut Matters deck. Juggernaut you control, attack each combat. Juggernauts can't be blocked by walls. Other creatures you control. <laughs> Other creatures you control have base power, toughness 5, 3, and are Juggernauts. So it, it turns all your creatures into Juggernauts. Cute card, probably not good in standard. I'm sure there's a deck for it. And if there's anything like the old White Sun Zenith where you can make a few tokens at the end of your opponent's turn and then just slam this and kill them, maybe there's a place for it. I doubt it. I'll give it a 5. Because it's if, if the deck exists, it's good. And also, it's just fucking hilarious. All right, Arcfiend of the Dross. Two black black. Oh, a 6-6 six, six, six demon for four. So what's its drawback? Flying, enters the battlefield for four oil counters. Hey, there's oil counters. If you have your upkeep, remove an oil counter from this. Then if it has no oil counters, you lose the game. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, its control loses two life. Okay, so you get three attacks with it, and then you need to kill it. Seems fine, honestly. I'm going to go with a five, because again, it's, it's, it's a if the deck exists type of thing. I think you play it in that theoretical junk deck, and it just does work. I mean, on average, you need three attacks to kill someone, you'll find a way to do two other damage. And you just kill one of their creatures. That's convenient, actually. If they have no life gain, you just attack three times and kill one creature, and you win. Okay. Blade of Shared Souls, two and a blue. Equipment from Mirrodin. When this equipment enters the battlefield, create a 2-2 rebel attached to it. Oh, so it's old living weapon. Becomes attached to a creature. As long as the Blade of Souls remains attached to it, you may have that creature become a copy of another target creature you control. Oh. So it's Clone Blade. Cute card. Don't think it's going to be good in standard. Well, like you play it and you just get the clone. So it's not, like, dead when you play it. That makes it a little better in my eyes. So I'll say it's a six. All right, Norn's Wellspring. Two and a white. Our creature, the control dies. Scry one, put an oil counter on this. Remove two oil counters, draw a card. I don't think that's good. If there's a, if there's a token deck, maybe it's good. But I think it's going to be just a trap. Oh, well, the scrying is good. I'll give it a four. No, I'll give it a five. If deck exists, it's good. Land, land. Move to Scry and meta, meta detect. One blue blue. Of a blue creature to control, if one of this comes tap, draw a card, discard a card. Art artifact creatures get plus one plus one. Phyrexian blue, target creature becomes target creature you control becomes a blue artifact. Activate as a sorcery. Okay, that seems that seems good. You probably have too many hoops to jump through to make it actually like strong. Like it feels like a cop out to say like just five is if the deck exists because like everything gets a five. Well, like five. This is a strong five. If you didn't have to discard a card, it'd be like a seven. All right, Geth, one black black. Other creature you control get is that minus one? Yeah. It is minus one, minus one. Return to a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains. This creature will leave the battlefield. Exile it instead. Activate the sorcerer. Okay. So that seems really strong. You wouldn't play it in that aggro deck we're talking about. Uh, maybe you would, actually. Yeah, so you can, like, mill yourself, play other mill cards, return some big giant thing, maybe this juggernaut, and kill them. Maybe that makes the juggernaut better, but I'll leave him at a five. I'll say this is a seven. It's an interesting effect. Seems very strong. Like, he lives and you're, you're winning. Okay, two mana. Put an oil on this. Add, add wing ding. Only if two or more oils. One tap draw card. Activate if five more oils. Okay. So, control deck. Would definitely want this. It gives you mana acceleration, semi-early, and infinite card draw. This is an eight. Easy. Um, only control deck, though. All right, Mercule Spell Dancer. Blue one. Can't be blocked. Oh, that's nice. Cast an Ocarage Spell. Put a counter on this. Deals combat damage to your player. You may remove two oil counters if you do. Next instant or sorcery this turn, copy it. This is... Okay, no, this is strong. Like, if it's a blue tempo deck, obviously this is really good. Here's, like, a control deck. 
like previously I said the red guy, you bring him in in a control sideboard, but now you bring this in. This is really good. Just like copy a kill spell or a tempo deck copy of Vapor Snag or Unsummon or whatever. No, this is a 9. 5, blue red, flying, 6-6. Six, six. Ward 3 and pay 3 life. So that's Ward's the, the target if they have to do that. So, seems okay. I guess not creature spell, create X. 1-1 one, one, goblins. X is an that spell, they gain haste. Okay, a good way to win the game. Cost 7 mana though. He's a creature, so it's pretty fragile, even with the ward. Maybe a 6. Evolved Spinoderm. 2 green green. It's just about to field 4 oil counters. It's trample as long as it has 2 or fewer, otherwise it has hexproof. Oh. Do you need your upkeep remove an oil counter? It has no oil, so sacrifice it. So it's something for that oil land to do. I think this will be a role player. I don't even think it's a 5 though, I think it's more of a. Oh. I think it's a 5 actually. Hexproof is really strong. You get two turns of it with Hexproof. Turn you play it. Next turn you get to attack with it. Still has Hexproof. On your next turn it loses Hexproof. Actually, I'm going to say this is... I'm going to go on a limb and say this is an 8. Because I don't think... I think for aggro, sure. But I think control. You build an interesting control deck. Hexproof th threats are great there. And this is a big one. Next up. Tune around. It's being a combat on your turn. Put an oil counter on this. Create an X1 token or trample in haste for X is number of oil counters on this. Sacrifice it at the end step. Okay, so it's like, it's like the old Shrine of Burning Rage. It will eventually kill them. I like it. The token has trample. You can build a control deck that just waits until this kills them. But I assume artifact hate will be all over the place. So I'll, I'll give it like a four. Yeah, I'll give it a four. Kimba. One and a white. Kimba, another cat, and just battlefield under control. Attach up to one target equipment. You control that creature. Equip creature you control. Get plus one, plus one. Three white, white. Create a cat. Seems okay. And that theoretical white weenie deck. Maybe it's something as long as you have like equipment you actually want to play. Even without equipment, where it's just a grizzly bear that makes cats. It could be like your late game sideboard option. Five. I should have just made my scale one through five and just had three beat, whatever. It's five. Strokes is five. One and a white enchantment. Not an artifact that's important. At the beginning of your upkeep, you lose one life and create a one one. Oh. With toxic and camp block. Okay. Corrupt as long as an opponent has three or more poison counters. Creature control toxic of lifelink. That might matter. Actually, that, that kind of does matter. That's that's that may, that pushes this card up even more. Not blocking is a big deal. Like I get it, this is this is white bitter blossom. But one, they don't fly. Two, they can't block. Not flying, whatever. Not blocking, big deal. Because blocking is how you'd stop things like this 5-5 five, five up here from eating your face. So I'm gonna say I think people are gonna overrate this, but I think it's probably more along the lines of like a seven. Like it'll do the job. Um in certain decks you will play it, you will love it, you will win the game with it. But I don't think it's gonna be as bitter blossomy as people are gonna think. So I'll give it a 7. Kythic, Crucible, Goliath, 2 black, red. Maybe your instep, you may sacrifice another creature. If you do, reveal cards from the top of your library until reveal a non legendary creature card with less mana value. Put it on the battlefield, put the rest on the bottom of your library. That seems mediocre. Less mana value. If it was less or equal to, then maybe we've got something. I mean, I'm sure someone will come up with some weird combo deck with this guy. I don't think it'll be in standard. I'm going to give him a 4. Now I'll give him a 5. 5 is just like the standard. Unless, like, a card needs to be pretty bad to get less than that. White Sun's Twilight. Oh, the other whites, the other sun didn't, they don't shuffle in. Yeah, this doesn't shuffle in either. X, white, white. Gain X life. <laughs> Gross. Create X, one, one. Might, oh, this one's a sorcery. Oh, I'm all over the place. Gain X life, create X, one, one. Might tokens with toxic. Effects is five more, destroy all other creatures. That's okay, Control will definitely play it. I mean, a Wrath's a Wrath, and a Wrath that comes with a two-turn clock is a really strong Wrath. And it gains life. Yeah, this card is Control All-Star, nine, easy. Like I said, 10 has to be, like, every deck would want it. Like a Muta Vault or something. This is a 9. Legos with Guardians. Land Sphere. Another Sphere. Tap add 1. 1 tap add any color. Okay. X tap becomes a copy of target and non-token artifact you control with mana value X. Okay. This is good. There is some way that this is broken. I can't think of it right now. But I'm sure it is. So because of that, I will give it an 8. If I could think of how it's broken, I'd give it a 9 or a 10. But I think it's an 8. Alright. Venzer. Oh, Venzer's dead. Lame. Blue and a black. Lifelink, Toxic 1. Whenever you proliferate, choose 1. If you don't control a creature named the Hollow Sentinel, create the Hollow Sentinel, a Legendary 3-3. Three, three. The Hunter of Active Control gets Flying a Lifelink. Seems mediocre. I mean, I guess if you build some sort of proliferate deck, it, this is like a 3. Like, maybe there's something here, but I'm going to call it a 3. Red Sun's Twilight. X Red Red. Destroy X Star Artifacts if X is 5 or more. For each artifact destroyed this way, create a token's copy of it. Tokens gain haste, exile them. Good sideboard card, so I'll call this a 4 as well. Thrun. Hey, the Trolls guy's back. 3 Green Green. Can't be countered, trample. Can't be targeted of non green spells your opponent's control or abilities from non green sources your opponent's control. Long to your turn, indestructible. Alright, so this is another good control card. Obviously, it's going to be played against control as well a lot because of these. 
boards, but 5 mana 5-5, five, five, probably too expensive for actual standard. I'll give it a 6. I think it's slightly better than if the deck exists. You'll see a lot of sideboard play, so we'll call it a 6. Alright, Seventh Chronicler, 2. One player casts their first multicolored spell each turn, each other player draws a card. That's like a 2. It, it, like, this is not good. I mean, it's a 3-1 for 2. There's some value in that. And maybe, like, multicolored decks are, like, the shit. I mean, it stops your opponent from playing multicolored cards. If multicolored cards are really good, then this card becomes really good. I don't think they are. Maybe you play... Okay, actually, if you put it in an aggro deck... Okay, I'll give it a 5. If the deck exists, it's good, because it's a 3-1 for 2. Renary Rot Priest, green mana, toxic 1. It's a 1-1? One, one? It's 1-2. One, Even better. Creature control becomes target of a spell. Target opponent gets poison counter. If the poison deck exists, this is a big part of it. I think... I don't think this will be... I think people will say this is strong for Infect in Modern, but I don't think it is. It doesn't actually have Infect. And I'll call it a 5. We're doing the Master Core 5. First strike protection from multicolored. Hero keeps sacrifice unless you discard a card. If you discard a card this way, destroy target non-land permanent. Bone controls the man value less than or equal to the man value of the discard card. It's okay, it's a hold role player. Give it a 4. It costs 5 mana and you have to lose cards. Seed Core, it's another sphere. I don't mana of any color, spends mana like cast Phyrexian creature spells. Okay, well that makes the the one deck tick. The junk deck. So all your creature spells are Phyrexian. This card is, it's a, it's, well actually let's finish this. Target one one creature is plus two plus one, activate only if your opponent has three or more poison guys. Okay, this is a ten. For standard, this is a ten. Like, every good creature is Phyrexian, so this is every color, and it just has this bonus effect. This is probably a ten. Maybe maybe a nine, because maybe there's some non-Phyrexian decks, but aggro is a mid-range will click, it's all Phyrexian all the time. I'll give it the ten. There's a battlefield with five oil counters, remove an oil counter, gains vigilance and menace, remove two oil counters, plus two plus two, remove three oil counters, destroy dragon artifact or enchantment. Alright, this is a solid role player, it's gonna be a good it's gonna have that ability right there in a format about artifacts. So I'm gonna give it a seven. Maybe an eight. But I haven't seen a lot of red or green cards, so Copland Gorge, been over that. Dragon Glider. Premiered in makes a two-two. So it itself is a four-four flying in haste for four. That's actually strong. And then when you kill it, it just makes every creature a threat. Um, I'm gonna call it a six. Like it's not bad on its own, but if the deck exists, it's really good. Like the Kemba from earlier. If you can just you know you make a cat, slap it on here, and all your cats are dragons. Seems pretty good. Rexian Arena reprint. Hero keep draw card lose a life. Fine, solid card. Don't know if it's if it's good enough for modern standard. Modern standard has gotten pretty out of the hand. Call it a five. The deck exists. It's good. Come to worlds. Two green green. Play lands from your graveyard. Choose target non land permanent. If you haven't cast a spell this turn, you may cast that card. If you do, you can't cast initial spells this turn. Activate as a sorcery. That's really good. This is a ten. This is a ten. There's nothing else to say about this card. Is amazing. In control, it's everything you want. You just replay planeswalkers. And aggro decks, like, it doesn't do anything on its own the turn you play it, which is kind of a bummer. But you put it in the sideboard and you can rebuild easily. Or mid-range is where this can really shine. Mid-range and control. Yeah, this is a 10. Eternal Wanderer. Four white-white. There, better. No more than one creature can attack this. Okay, that's pretty good. Exile to one target artifact creature. Turn it to the battlefield at the beginning of the next instep. Zero, create a 2-2 two -two with double strike. Minus four, each player choose a creature they control. Each Oh, for each player, so I get to choose. Okay. Each player sacrifices all creatures they control not chosen. And we have another 10. This is a 10. This is a 10. This completely warps the game around it. The fact that this exists, like if both players have a full board, like you'll just build your deck in such a way that your creatures are, on average, just strong creatures on their own. You slam this, you keep your best creature, they keep their worst. Yeah, that's that's insane. And only one creature can attack it. So like, if they only attack with one creature, you, even an unsummon will do the job to protect her. Yeah, this is, this is a 10. That's insane. All right, so I decided I am going to actually finish this review out and just review the rest of the cards, uh, but my mic stand broke, so I hope this part doesn't sound too awkward. Anyways, so first up, Kaito. Two blue black planeswalker. Whenever one or more creatures you control does combat damage to a player, you may return one of them to the to its owner's hand. If you do, you may activate loyal abilities Kaito twice this turn rather than only once. Okay. Three loyalty. Plus one, up to one target creature can't attack or block, so you can make their one block or not block. Seems good. Zero, draw card, always good. Minus two, create a two-two drone with death touch, and once the creature leaves the battlefield, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. That's like a sleeper good ability, I think. Let me give him a seven. If the deck exists, he's, it's, he's really disturbingly good, but if the deck doesn't exist, eh. I think if there's a strong tempo deck, though, in blue-black, then he's he could even be an eight or nine, like he can be very powerful. Green Sun's Twilight, Green X, reveal top X plus one of your library, choose a creature and or land, and or, okay. Put those cards onto your hand, the rest on the bottom of your library. If X is five or more, put the chosen cards onto the battlefield, 
or in your hand and the rest on the bottom. Okay, so it's like summoning trap, but it could also just draw you two cards if you're really lucky. Like it could be green one, draw two, if the top is a creature in a land. Um, let me go to seven. You can build an entire deck around that, really. And people have, and people will. In bad cases, the card just could be good on its own. Okay, Rat King. Okay, Toxic. Or the Ratchet Control of Toxic. Okay. Enter the battlefield, look at the top five cards of your library, reveal any number of rats from among them, put them in your hand. So this is a commander card. This is a three. Maybe even a two. But it's it's a commander card. Built like a rat-themed deck. With that and 70 Relentless Rats and 30 Swamps. One Thrumming Stone. <laughs> Something like that. Cute, but... Not standard. So I remember seeing these a while ago, but now we actually know what Toxic does, so that's something. So let's see if I reevaluate them. Three and a red, four, two, which is Battlefield, DSX, Damage, Need, Target, where X's number, permanent, two control with oil counters on them. We didn't see that much oil counter stuff. The stuff we saw, though, wasn't really in red. That being said, there's a land with oil counters, so you could even just, I could see a world where there's a mono red burn deck, and you play four of that oil land, and you play this guy just as a, I play him and I deal on average two or three damage to you. Because, oh, well, I need to check the oil land again. Here, enters with two oil counters, put an oil counter target artifact or creature. Okay, so you can, yeah, so one of those lands is effectively two oil counters, right? Because you can, you play the land, tap it, and put the oil counter on something else. So if you have two of those lands, this deals four damage. If you oil their oil cards, like the one drop, those are oil counters too. So yeah, this is a, this is an eight. This is an eight. If burn exists, it's disgusting. Let's see, bladed ambassador, one white, three one, enters an oil. Uh -huh. One Riven Oil gains indestructible. Okay. Solid white mini card. Let's give it a five. Yeah. Give it a four. It's not even like broken. It's just like it's a solid white mini card. Necrogen Rot Priest. Two black green. Toxic two. Every creature you control with toxic deals combat damage to a player. That player gets an additional poison counter. Okay. An easier way to win with those little Frexian mites and stuff. Every creature you control with toxic gains death touch. Okay. Is that a four or a one? Can't see. It's one. It's an okay card. Probably another four or three. I'll give it a 4, because if the Toxic deck exists, you want this, and it, they let you win the game pretty easily. Um, it's cost 1 green, right? Yeah, that's so hard to see. Why can't people just, if you're going to leak stuff, take better pictures, please. Green, 1, 2. Tap, put an oil counter on this. Tap, remove an oil counter from this, untap target land. Mediocre card, probably going to see some play somewhere, but I'll give it a 2. Canker Bloom. 1 and a green, 3, 2. Decent stats. One sack, choose one, just return artifact to target enchantment, proliferate. Okay, so a strong sideboard card that you can actually just play main deck, so I'll give it a six. Like, these are the kind of cards that you really want, cards that you can just play main deck, and especially in a set where if it's anything like the old Mirrodin sets of the past, artifacts are going to be everywhere. You're going to want as many main deckable ways to kill artifacts as you can get. Also, cards like this make that the, that new Bitter Blossom seem even worse. All right, Bone Picker Scourge, two and a black, flying, as long as one has three or more poison counters, has Death Touch and Life Link. Mediocre card, draft card, not standard. It's a one. Like, you're not playing this in standard. If you're playing this in standard, you're doing something wrong. Two and one. Hey, it's a rat. We can play with the rat king. Toxic one dies proliferate. Again, I think this is more of a limited card, but the dying and the proliferating thing, there could be something with proliferating. There's the Venzer who, who triggered off proliferates. I'll give it a three. That's being generous, I feel like. Nissa, the unreadable. So three green green and two Phyrexian green. So seven mana or five mana and four life or six mana and two life completed. Doesn't that mean, yeah, if life was paid, you get two less loyalty, even if you only pay two life. So it's seven loyalty or five if you pay life. We can't see what the last ability is because, again, people with pictures are idiots. So on a turn, great, you control equals most for each force, you control and gain trample. So if it's five or less, then this is a five mana win the game for the green deck, right? You'll build a mono green aggro deck, you'll slam this. Is it possible that this is fake? This has been proven to be real? Because, like, I feel like this isn't this isn't how they would word that ability. Create an XX horror creature juggler X is... Maybe it is? Might as well just try an artifact and enchantment. So like if you play it for 5 mana, then it comes in with 5 loyalty, you plus 1, you get a 6-6. Six, six. So it's a 5 mana 6-6. Six, six. It can destroy artifacts and enchantments, which is good. And we really need to know what this is. Like if it's 5, you just slam this and you win the game because you have overrun. Like a super strong overrun. You just play mono forests. Alright, if this is real, I'll give it a 7. Part of me thinks that's not real, though. I think it's just a proxy someone printed to f*** with people. Ooh, there's more. Okay, we have Koth. Two red red, search your library for basic mountain, reveal it, put it in your hand, and shuffle. Plus two. Why does it have to be basic? That's so annoying. Minus three, deals damage to target creature equal to the number of mountains you control. Fine. For four mana walkers, seems kind of weak. Minus seven, emblem with whenever mountain enters the battlefield control. Emblem deals four damage to any target. Good way to win the game. Ugh. Why do they do my man Koth like this? 
Maybe a four. I give him a four. It's pretty weak for a planeswalker. How snorn. Oh, the thing that everyone in ADH is raging about. If permanent entering the battlefield causes a trigger ability of a permanent control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. Permanents entering the battlefield don't cause abilities to your permanents. Permanents control to trigger. 4-7 for 5. Standard, maybe there's some combo with it. I doubt it, though. 5-mana creatures that do nothing when you play them are pretty crappy. I'll call it a 4. Phyrexian Obliterator. Black, 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 black. Wee! 4 black. Trample. Good old reprint here. Like, mono black has to exist for this to be good. When mono black exists, though, it's a strong card. It's not even like a broken card, though. People always were obsessed with it. And they're just like, oh, Frick's Blitter, I'll go for the throat. Nice card. I'll give it a five, which I think even a five is generous. My hand is killing me. Jorkanine, first card, Gold Warden. Red or white, trample. When it attacks, gets plus X, plus X, where X is the number of equipped creatures you control. Okay, so in that theoretical, there's a red white equipment deck that they're obviously pushing here. Um, haven't seen enough for it here. It's clear that they're pushing it, so I assume there's even more in the set. The little dragon thing was pretty neat. I'm gonna give this a six. I think the deck is already looking pretty strong. It just needs a little bit more support, and he's pretty strong. Drawing cards is always good. And having trample on, it's it's a two-two for two that's gonna be more than a 2 2 for 2, right? It's gonna attack for 3 or 4 every turn. It's it's gonna be good. Slow bad. You're slow and bad. 2 and a red. Tap, sack an artifact, add an amount of red equals to artifact. So it only cast artifacts, spells, or activate abilities for artifacts. It's it's probably a casual less UDH card. I don't think this is standard. If it is, it's gonna be you cheat out like big things like that juggernaut guy, which maybe if there's enough big things, then this is good. But I'm guessing there's probably not, so I'll give him a 5 though, because if the deck exists, he's an important part of it. Blue Sun's Twilight. Blue Blue X. Sorcery gain control to a creature made by X or less. X is five or more creative token that's copy that creature. That can be strong. It probably will be strong. I'll give it an eight because I feel like there's a lot. You know what? It might actually be better than that. Creatures are becoming stronger and stronger. Taking them is going to be some. It, like taking them is killing them. You can spend more mana to, to duplicate the creature because it says X or less. You don't have to spend. Like if it's a four drop, you can spend five instead to get the creature twice. The only downside I'd say is there are a lot of legendary creatures now, which makes the second part less good. But I think this is actually a nine. I think this is a strong card. Very strong card. Oh, look, planes. Uh, that's a two. That's a ten. Uh, seven, four, one. Ooh, that was a cool. Why does the red get a skull and the black gets a rib cage? <laughs> that's weird. Uh, the blue one gets all proby. I want to get these and alter them to be the little things from Portal. They already look like them. So that's a cool island. So same cards. These are Street Fighter cards. So we are done. That is it. Well, I gotta say, I'm actually kind of excited for this set. Might actually get me to try magic again, or to go back to playing arena again. So let me know what you agree with, what you disagree with. If you're the person who takes these pictures and leaks them, please, please just get a better camera. Take better pictures, like focus on things. Like I don't need to see a focus of your dirty fingernail here. Just focus on the card, please. This is, come on, it's 2023. <laughs> like iPhones are great cameras. Like just use that. Anyways, um, I got to go order a new mic arm. My arm's falling asleep. Like, comment, all that stuff. Let me know if you want to see more of this, and I will see you all eventually.